Hello. So our um, video summary this week was to design a writing prompt and accompanying rubric that challenges students to respond to something in your discipline. So first I'll start with my learning target and um, that is, I can defend my claim about genetically modified organisms using evidence from multiple sources. And my standard that matches with it is taken from the Next Generation Science website, um, part of the Life Sciences section. And the section is called Inheritance and Variation of Traits. I couldn't really find a standard that perfectly matched up with my learning target and my prompt. Um, and this is actually something I've had trouble with in the past. So what most closely aligned um, were these two standards. So the first is ask questions to clarify relationships about the role of DNA and chromosomes in coding the instructions for characteristic traits passed from offspring, parents to offspring. And then the second would be make and defend a claim based on evidence that inheritable genetic variations may result from one, new genetic combinations, two, viable errors during replication, and three, mutations caused by environmental factors. Um, so like I said, neither of these uh, directly relates to my learning target. Um, doesn't mention genetic engineering or GMO, but those are pretty specific terms. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions um, for what you've done um, in the past for relating your, your making sure your standards align with your um, prompt. Because yeah, I'm not sure what to do if they don't perfectly match, if it means you should just scrap the assignment or if you can still work with it. Because um, I know it's good to have clarity with the standards. So the third standard that I found is a literacy one from the Common Core, and this one matches perfectly. Um, it is write arguments to support claims in an analysis of substantial topics or texts using valid reasoning and relevant and sufficient evidence. So that is exactly what my students will be doing. So that one I was happy about. <laughs> um, OK, what information will students already know? So the students will have learned the basics of genetic engineering. They will understand the general method of making um, a GMO. And so they know that scientists identify the trait of interest, um, isolate it, and then insert it into a new genome. And finally, they grow the GMO. That's their background knowledge. So my beautiful problem um, is you are a voting citizen approaching the next election. There is a new law proposed regarding genetically modified organisms. The law tightens restrictions on producing GMOs, urging the U.S. to reduce the overall percentage of GMOs produced in the agricultural industry. Many people argue that GMOs are beneficial, providing food in mass quantities to feed large populations. Others believe they may have unpredictable health risks. Research each side of the position and take a stand for or against GMOs. Argue how you will vote on the law at the election. Include specific evidence from examples from three sources, one peer reviewed and two other articles that support your case. The length um, should be one page single spaced, size 12 font, Times New Roman with standard word processor margins. So there's my prompt. Um, okay, is writing the best way to explore this beautiful problem? I think a writing assignment for this prompt is just fine. Students will get great practice um, identifying both sides of the argument, sifting through um, papers and peer-reviewed journals to find relevant uh, support for their claim, and then they'll practice you know, writing and using conventions and organization and all that. So definitely like a worthwhile experience. Um, I do think it would be really fun to kind of broaden the assignment and have students work in pairs and each pair picks one topic. So it could be another controversial topic like climate change, um, cloning, stem cell research, biodiversity loss, just any issue in biology. And each partner has to take um, opposite sides. So t together they 
make like a PowerPoint presentation and present the argument, almost like a little debate. Um, so then the class gets exposed to a bunch of issues and they get to see both sides of the issue. So I think that would also be a cool way to um, practice arguing in science. Um, okay, my operative verb is um, argue. And the verb argue um, encapsulates what my students will do because that's exactly what they're going to do. Um, the definition of argue is to give reasons or cite evidence in support of an idea, action, or theory, typically within the aim of persuading others to share one's view. So my students will be doing exactly that. They're going to be practicing their critical writing skills while um, using evidence that's that highly relevant to the content area. Um, yeah, they'll be arguing their point. Um, and then why is it important in my discipline? So a couple of reasons. The first um, is that real biologists have to do that every day in their job. So when they're writing an article about a new finding in science, they have to sort through all the data look at old data from other people, compile it into a readable format. Um, sometimes they're not arguing, but they're still following the same steps that it takes to form an argument where they have to take in new information and synthesize it. Um, it's also important um, to be able to argue in a science class because if you are good at that skill, it will translate into all other disciplinary areas. Um, in all your high school classes and even on into later later life it's just a good skill to be able to not just say why you think something or what you think but say why you think that um, is the way it is and support it with with examples so that people will believe you <coughs> excuse me okay so what are the requisite steps to doing that verb um, I really liked this one quote from Writing Like a Scientist, and they say, to begin, multiple sources may first be reviewed and considered with the intent being to understand the topic, the pro and con arguments being postulated, and the evidence being used to support all positions. Then, to craft a sound argument, a student must be able to see the difference between the position or stance he has taken to those promoted by the others he has studied. I liked this a lot because it points out how important it is to see both sides of the argument um, instead of just making your claim and finding um, evidence to support it before you even understand what the other side is saying. So I think that's one important step of forming an argument. Um, and then other than that, you have to obtain evidence from sources, um, evaluate the evidence, take a stance, and communicate it. So that's the general... Uh, process. Um, my prompt does include all the steps. I tell them that they need to research both sides and find credible sources um, and write a coherent argument. And my rubric I have attached to this post and I, that was my first rubric I ever made and it was pretty tough. I wanted to include way more things because you just have endless possibilities but you really do have to hone in on the, the most important things you're going to be looking for um, in the writing piece. So I, I included ideas, organization, and then one category for a sentence fluency and word choice. And then the last category is sources. I combined sentence fluency and word choice because I didn't really feel like in a science class they should be focusing as much on that. I mean, it's important, but not a total of four points important. So two points each. Um, and then, yeah, the main focus is just like, is your paper organized? Are your ideas uh, clearly presented and supported? And then do you have the right amount of sources and are they credible, up-to-date, relevant, all that jazz? So I think it's really important to have like some sort of mention for sources because you're, you know, you're making this big claim and your students should know that you can't just take data from Wikipedia. Like it has to be from, you know, tested time and time again for them to be making this big claim and not, you know, to avoid making assumptions or presenting, even worse, presenting false information. Um, and the last question is, will the students do anything with their writing beyond just writing? Um, 
I think I would just have this be a writing assignment submitted and call it good. I think they'd appreciate that. Or if they really want to write a podcast and talk about it more, that would be great. And maybe ex extra credit opportunity for that. Um, okay. So that is my, all I have for you guys. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.